looking forward to be able to use the iPad as a tool that just allows them to um, take their learning to a new level that it excites them and engages them and challenges them to develop their own content and understandings of, those, of that content. Um, a key learning I got from today's workshop is the need to make technology not the driver of what we do but always use our, um, our content work or our KLAs to drive the use of technology in classrooms and for students learning. I've actually taken a lot away from today. We don't want to use them in a way that it's just not effective, we're just using them for the sake of it. We have been kind of looking at the backwards way of looking at a great app and trying to figure out how we're going to use that app, but today's really helped us understand that that's the wrong process. So that's already clarified an issue we had, how we're going to use all our apps. We don't need to use all our apps, we need to know how we're going to use, how we're going to achieve our goal effectively. I suppose one of the things I've also learnt today is in terms of the workflows uh, and thinking about that um, fairly carefully, not only as adults but then how you're going to work with kids in terms of workflows so that there's that sort of sharing that's going on. The challenges for one to one are one to one iPads are the just having the iPads for starters, kids having their own iPad, taking them home I think is going to be a challenge. Um, for some parents it's going to be a real challenge. They have a, a big enough challenge having a, lap a laptop or a desktop computer in their house, let alone having an iPad. So I think there's a lot of education for parents is going to have to take place to overcome that challenge. Also the diversity of teachers and where they're at in their learning for using technology. We have some that are very comfortable with technology and others that aren't. So really pairing teachers up, um, making sure they get the professional development they need to integrate um, the iPad program effectively. There's always the challenge of, uh, you know, when things drop out or things don't quite go to plan, it's, I suppose, being able to develop enough um, skills so you've got a few um, troubleshooting processes that you can do, uh, but also having enough resilience to give it a go, to keep giving it a go, you know, when things don't quite go to plan. I think one of the biggest challenges is there is actually so many opportunities and for teachers I can see that being, you know, I can see that being overwhelming. Um, so I think it's going to be important, at least for us anyway, to, to start small and do it well uh, rather than trying to do too many things um, too fast uh, and not doing it so well. Um, because again, you know, the object has to be keeping in mind what is it that we're trying to look, uh, teach the kids and just always keep that in focus. The biggest thing is that uh, it, it's really highlighted how many opportunities there are in terms of the use of the iPads in terms of 1-1. One, one. Um, you know, there's none of that uh, waiting for a turn, you know, to get a particular task done, um, those sorts of frustrations with the wait time. You lose the flow uh, of whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. But I think also it's very much about it's still always about good teaching. It's still always about being really focused on what is it that I want my students to learn. Planning that learning in terms of what it is that, they're trying, that you're trying to uh, achieve. And then it's a case of choosing then the best tool or the best app or whatever it might be in terms of technology that might support that um, and enhance that. And I guess it's just the huge possibilities in terms of engaging kids uh, and really getting them to work collaboratively.